actually a podcast about knitting. I'm your host, Steph, also known as The Knitting Samurai on Ravelry and Instagram. And yeah, how about I talk about some knitting, talk about my boys, tell you what's going on with me, and uh, laugh a little bit at Mr. Groot. <laughs> so Groot is actually from, from Target. You could have your very own if you'd like. Um, yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy with Chris Pratt. It's a Marvel movie. Um, yeah, I like it. <laughs> So one of my coworkers had a Groot at the office, the plant one that's in a plant pot, just a little baby bobblehead one, not like my big one that sings and dances. Anyways, I saw hers and I was jealous and I had to go get my own Groot. And since we're home, I thought I could share my Groot with you. So <laughs> that kind of sounds gross, doesn't it? Oh my goodness. It's going to be that kind of show. Okay. Let me tell you, this is the third time I sit down to record. I know. I initially... We were supposed to be talking on Friday. That's my 10 day mark, but things are not going to go according to plan at work on Friday. We won't be able to run off together. So I have meetings, too many meetings for Friday, if you ask me, but whatever. Um, so I thought I would sneak in some time together with you here. And Mr. Linus is in the house. So he'll visit for a second. He'll visit for a second. You guys can't hear him, but he's full of purrs. Oh, there you go. There you go. Tell them. The coughing fit. So, <laughs> it's not going to make for a very good recording. It's really not. <laughs> this is a store-bought sweater. I did not knit this. Just so we know. So we're not asking. Okay. Let's talk about my knitting. All right. First up, my shawl. This is the Easy Shawl by Martina Bem. And I am knitting this as part of the Stitch Addiction May Shawls knit along. I know... Kate is crazy excited to be knitting shawls and I'm going to steal some of her excitement and knit along. I'm using Dumb Roving Frolicking Feet, which is a transitions yarn in the apple picking colorway. I am knitting on US size, you know, finest. you didn't have to put everything on my notes. Uh, three, 3.25 millimeter needles. Have I told you my epiphany? If you knit sock weight yarn, on size threes instead of size zeros. It knits a lot faster. You're welcome. That is my insight. After 10 years of knitting, this is what I have to share with you. <laughs> so, um, so the, this pattern, simple pattern, easy. I'm enjoying it. The, um, oh my gosh. Okay. So this pattern, easy and I'm really enjoying it. Um, I was happily knitting along, knitting along and I got to the first transition and was highly disappointed in what I found. And I debated about talking about this on the podcast or not, but I was so frustrated that I feel like I have to say something, but I don't want to say anything other than what I would say to the dyer herself. So, um, the transition was not what I expected, not what I would have um, liked, and I will not be buying this yarn again. After I hit that first transition section of the yarn, so if you remember, I've recaked it since, but it was for different colors of yarn. It was the one I had in the little plastic holder, and I was so excited about the holder. Oh my gosh, it's my hair elastic. <laughs> okay. Oops. Don't go get it. I threw it behind the jewelry stand. Don't, don't go get it. He loves hair elastics. I don't know. Anyways, um, after I hit that transition, I said, okay, I'm going to treat this as four distinctly different yarns and manage the colors the way I want to. So I did 11 rows of the second color and then started, um, the third color right there. So, uh, nothing wrong with the pattern. I'm just going to manipulate the yarn the way I want to because there's no point in um, treating it as a gradient yarn, which is what I thought I purchased. So there's that. Um, also, oh my goodness. So, <laughs> I've been watching The Voice, and I have to tell you, I think Megan Lindsay, <gasps> I'm stuck, is going to go all the way. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be her. I am a couple episodes behind, so don't tell me if she's been knocked off. But I really, really was into Kimberly Nicole, but I don't think she has what it takes to win. And Megan's pipes just blow me away. So, yeah. Also, <laughs> I expected to be further along on these socks than I am. 
Um, yeah, we were supposed to talk in a couple days from now. And since we're not, I'll share them with you now. <laughs> um, thinking, thinking words are gone. Okay, so this is opal in a base. I can't say the name of it. It starts with an S. The colorway is 8127. And it's a great, let me show you the same side of both. It's a great faded down red blue color and I'm just starting my gusset increases on this one and it's my basic um, Wendy Johnson slip stitch heel basic sock two by two rib knit on US zeros two millimeter needles and I think I've said that every single episode of this podcast because that's my go-to sock pattern and I always have a pair of these on the needles so yeah there's that <laughs> Also, I'm going to pepper it in as I go. <laughs> I've also been watching um, Highlander, Outlander, Not Highlander, Outlander, and I've, it's a Scottish Highlands, and, which is a great um, sociological study in that culture. I, I was a little put off that I thought it was a romance novel. At least what I've seen so far is not, and I'm really enjoying it. Um, so I've been watching that. I've been watching season two of Homeland. And Steve and I are all caught up on Game of Thrones. I know. I know. It makes me sad. But, um, yeah. So that's what I've been viewing along with lots and lots and lots and lots of podcasts. So I finished this hat. This is the third of the swirl hats by Mandy Harrington. My goal is to do um, four of them. So I just have a little stockpile. And then I'm thinking if I give two as a um, baby shower gift, like a pair of them, that would be nice. I won't pair these two together, obviously, they're two somewhere, but I, you know, just for a, like acquaintance, a work thing, and not, you know, close family that I want to give you a really time consuming project or item, but just a little nice something hand knit that's good for those first few months, first week, not week, first month. So here's the second one. These are both into the world, different bases. Um, this one is the Quaro base, and it's the Winds of Change colorway. It was was one of the club colors. I'm on the crown decreases on this, so I'm, I'm probably not going to show it again. But so there's that. And then to match this, because I've knit a barn raising quilt square with this yarn, it was one of the rejected ones, and now I knit a newborn hat. So I have. I don't know, probably 300 Or that I cast on a left. second. No, I cast on a baby sweater. And this is the Linny sweater by uh, Justino Lakaroska. I'll type it right here. <laughs> I'm using US size fours. And it's a great little pattern for a small size sweater. Again, insights about knitting sock yarn on larger needles. Um, so I started thinking I had about 300 yards. And the pattern calls for 400 and it um the pattern is designed for a contrasting yarn so great <laughs> she did all the figuring out for me as to where to change so i used the into the world on the top and i switched so it'll have the into the world on the cuffs and the bottom hem as well um and then the rest of this maybe i'll make into minis i don't know i need to use it up I'm feeling the need to use it up. I'm also feeling the need to knit um, monkey socks into a baby hat. So <laughs> that's probably coming next week. But anyways, so the contrasting color, I went into the stash and I found a skein that I purchased at Over the Rainbow Yarns, I think is the name of the shop. It's in Rockland. We were visiting my in-laws and I got it like 75% off, highly discounted. It's called Milamia. It's a 100% extra fine merino, uh, naturally soft. It says Sweden on the front and then on the back of the tag, it says made in Italy. So do with that what you will. Um, here's the skein. It reminds me so much of Reynolds Review and Divine Zenith, which are both discontinued yarns that I absolutely love. I have sweaters worth of the two sweaters worth worth of the review I've knit a sweater for row out of it um oh it's kind of funny yeah Tristan wore one of the sweaters I knit 
uh, in our family picture that's at the lead-in on the lead-in the the navy and teal stripe sweater that Tristan's wearing that's in the review yarn I love that yarn absolutely love it so very happy to be working with a similar yarn probably the same pace um, for this as well so and I love the way the purple isn't that gonna be cute for a little girl I like it not too girly just just nice so that's on the needles right now um, let's see what else I have finished another dinner napkin for Mr. Tristan. So here is the fifth one that I have right here. Blah, blah, blah. And I've cast on a sixth and I'm into the decreases. So this is the grandma's dishcloth pattern. I don't know what size needles I'm using. I'm going to guess sixes or sevens. And this is more of a, to me, a more feminine colorway. But you know what I decided? He's not the only one using this. I'm using it. Right, they're on my hands to wash his face and hands, so it's fine. So I like that color, anyways. And let's see, what bag is this? This is my so for you bag. I think so. One of those kind of matches my sweater, huh? And this one I didn't tell you is yarn pop, yarnpop.com, and it has grommets on the front of it. Nice, nice canvas. Um, yeah. What else do I have to show you? Barn raising quilt. So one day last week, I laid out all of the squares <laughs> that all the, for Tristan, and I had my stack of um, going to be in the blanket and my reject stack, and my rejects way far outseated my in the blanket. Pile. So that was a little bit disappointing but um and i meant to count and i'm sorry i didn't i'm gonna say i have 10 finished like for real in the blanket squares and this is the one i finished this week so another blue i don't know i don't know what yarn it is no idea it's on my project page i think it's happy feet happy feet maybe i don't know um it's the same as all the other teal ones have been for the blanket. And then this is my in progress square. Oh my goodness, I'm a tangled mess. And dipping sauce by Leading Men Fiber Arts. I'm shaking my head because he's going to be the death of me. <laughs> Single handedly, Steve and Andy are going to just completely undo all of my good knitting to get to my missions. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is dipping sauce. So let me tell you that it is May. It is the beginning of May and Stash Dash is coming. Mm -hmm. And this year they are doing a three, a five, and a 10K. Oh my gosh. So I've attempted Stash Dash three times and I've finished, I've completed it twice. I think, I don't know what year the first one was, but it was the year they sent the buttons. It was the first year the so I got the buttons. Anyways, got a button. Um, and last year I completed it as well, but only because I planned ahead and I had the Vivid Blanket waiting to be bound off. And I've actually been using the Vivid Blanket. That's Tristan's. It's like a rainbow. I think it's in the title credits too. <laughs> now that I'm thinking about this. Um, I love that pattern. It's by Tin Can Knits. Highly recommend it. I get compliments on it every time every time I take it out but um, yeah so this year I'm going to again plan to complete I'm gonna do the 5k because that's what I know I can do and I mean it's a struggle it's definitely a challenge for me to get that done so I'm gonna start planning ahead so the la next two episodes don't look for any um, finished objects besides little small baby like small projects not necessarily baby projects, but small projects. Um, just because I want to save my yardage and make sure I can get to that 5,000 yard goal. So that's coming. And then Jackie called me out for Loopy You? Camp Loopy? Yes. So last year was the first year I did Camp Loopy. The first time I attempted Camp Loopy. And, you know, I cannot believe it's been a year already. 
Like I'm sitting here thinking back to last, it would have been June, maybe early July, sitting down at Jackson Landing by the UNH campus and seeing the college kids put in their kayaks while I sat in my car and Tristan napped in the back and I listened to Mr. Mercedes by Stephen King and I worked on Roland's Soledad sweater, which was my first Camp Loopy project. And I just have all these sunshine, happy memories. I can't believe it's been a year. <laughs> just, what? It's been a year already? Not quite, but almost. This is, whew, where does time go? <laughs> uh, so, I was a failure on the second one. So I tried, attempted to do a foolproof cowl by Louise Zaspam because that's the greatest name ever. I've decided. Mm -hmm. Don't you agree, girl? Yes, he agrees too. Um, yeah, so maybe I'll finish it this year, but I'm not going to commit to buying that much yarn from the Luby U. If I could do it with, if I could do their prompts and knit along without buying more yarn, I would. <coughs> but the point, ultimate point is to help them make sales. So it's hard. I'm not up for it this year. Maybe next year. Maybe. Um, if I could do it with Leading Men Fiber Arts yarn, I totally would. Because you know what? I keep buying it. Uh, yeah, I'm going somewhere with that. You wait. <laughs> so there's that. Camp Loopy, Stash Bash. What else did I want to talk about? I think that's it. Mini Skein Swap is in effect. So I spent entirely too much time magic linking everyone to their partners on the wrap board. So if you signed up and you haven't heard a peep yet, go over and check on the board or PM me because everyone should have a partner and hope there's been a lot of activity since partners were assigned. I know that on Friday, after I paired everybody up, I took two partners, I came home, I was so excited. I ran out to the stash and I started pulling skeins that fit their color and, um, dye technique that they wanted and I'm just <laughs> I'm gonna give you a preview okay so here's the first here's one of them I'm not gonna show you all of them don't worry I want my partners to be surprised but it makes me so happy to be sharing this can I just tell you that happy projects happy friendship like the good vibes that go into this I I don't even know how to say it like I bought this yarn from Laura of inspiration dye works she's not dying anymore but when she was she made incredible yarns and was always happy to custom dye and she did my knitting samurai colorway for me which just makes me so happy and um this was her gothic sock i knit myself a pair of socks with this i don't know if it was one of my first pairs of hers that i knit but i have those socks and i wear them and i love them and then i knit myself a barn raising quilt square out of this and i have enough to share with my partner and so now it's going to go to her and be in her blanket with it. like just the memories and oh this is great this is great why don't we do mini skein swaps all the time because i'm just so excited to be sending this out and sharing it with someone after i feel like it's been shared with me it had its time with me and now it gets to go live with someone else and be part of their world like i don't know it just it feels wonderful and i think i need to start a different blanket <laughs> completely different and just do these mini skein sw swaps and bring in the good vibes from other people I don't know how else to put that the good karma the happy thoughts um, I've been watching wolf farms for a while and every time Dawn would show her blanket and be very excited to share who sent what to her and what square she knit I was kind of like oh okay that's neat but I feel like after putting the, the time into putting these um, mini skeins together and thinking about the people and I just, I feel like I understand it a lot more and I want to be part of it. So, um, yeah, I think they're great. <laughs> I haven't received any, haven't sent any, but just started thinking about them and I'm, I'm feeling really excited about this whole thing and reading the thread over on Rob just the things that people are talking about and they're thinking about each other and it's great it's great we need to do this so um yeah PM me if you signed up and you haven't gotten anything and um I think we're good and I think I learned that next time I'm gonna put a question on there about international shipping or not I 
completely spaced on that being an essential ingredient on a swap sign up. <laughs> it's been a while since I've run a swap. So yeah. Yeah. So I hope you guys are down with that and enjoying it as much as I am. So I need to go get my partner some goodies, some goodies and uh, get them sent out. So there's that. Want to see some new stuff? I know. Okay. So when 2006, I think I've told you this before, 2006, Stephanie is a young knitter and she very uh, regularly, <laughs> I don't want to say religiously, but pretty regularly reads um, Into the World, no, <laughs> uh, Interweave and Vogue. So I'm not sure which one it was in. I really hope my feet aren't in your face. Uh, <laughs> but one of them had an advertisement for a bracelet that said Knitting Samurai. And I directed my mother to it at Christmas time and said, I would like this bracelet. So they got it for me. Fast forward to Christmas two years ago. The podcast had changed its name to Knitting Samurai Plus One. And my parents had a bangle worn for me, made for me that said Knitting Samurai Plus One. And I've worn that initial Knitting Samurai bracelet every day of my life since I got it until recently because I got a new bracelet. Can you guess what it says? <laughs> I don't remember the name of the Etsy seller, but I'll put it across the bottom and it'll be in the show notes because I think it was in Cyprus is where he shipped from. It was moderately quick shipping, but it's a custom made item. I got to pick uh, the font I wanted and the metal I wanted for this bangle. And I didn't exceed the character limits, which is a problem a lot of places when you try and have a custom engraving that says knitting samurai and her guys so that's my new one so I took off the plain knitting samurai because I'm not by myself very often anymore and three bangles was a lot of bangles so that's my new one it's got that what is it called bang finish I don't know it's textured the other two were both smooth yeah so and I could see that the plus one is eventually going to wear off, like the metal will wear down to the depth of the engraving. But this new one has black inside the letters. And so I think it'll last a little longer. It'll show up a lot longer. The original one had black inside the letters as well. So that's my new purchase as long as well as some yarn. Mm -hmm. So, um, <coughs> Steve and Andy, they have their color of the month. This is the second month they get me with it. <laughs> oh my God, squeak. Three exclamation points. Mm -hmm. I pre-ordered it in the, or ordered it in the callback base. Isn't it gorgeous? I know. So that's their sport weight. It's 100%. Superwash Merino, 328 yards. And it really wants to be a baby net. Because I don't think I can rock this on my body. To the woman wearing the orange sweater. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's gorgeous. It's so stunning. Kudos guys. You did a great job with this one. So, and of course you can't buy just one skein of yarn ever. Maybe I'll get over that. I don't think so though, but it'd be nice if I could. Um, so I have to take you back to the initial days of leading men fiber arts and Steve, my Steve, my husband, Steve knows that I like the yarn and glacial is my favorite colorway. And so he doesn't quite understand custom ordering and whatnot. And so he ordered me a skein, but he ordered it in lace weight. And I don't like lace weight. So I was never going to knit with it. So I got rid of it. But this was the perfect excuse. I was looking around and it was there in also the Happy Camper. No. No. What? That, I think that's twice I've said that today. If not this recording, the last one or I call, call back in the callback base. <laughs> and yeah. So this was my first Leading Men Fiber Art color love, and now I have it. And if I don't knit with it quick, it's going to turn it into a too coveted to be knit with. So it's a gorgeous, gorgeous aqua, lime, and gray color. So those are new. And then I have to show you the other yellow that I bought for Tristan's blanket arrived, and it's um, Fiber Knit Dye Works Bounce Base in the Summer Squash colorway. Isn't that yellow amazing? I looked at it and I was like, she couldn't have hit summer squash more spot on. Like, I want to eat it. I want to stir fry right now because this is perfect. But when I hold it up against this, I like dipping sauce better. 
is better matched to this, so I don't think I'm going to include this in the blanket. Although I do reserve the right to completely change my mind five times before we talk again. Because that's the story of this blanket, Stephanie's indecision. And then the other skein that I ordered was the turquoise blue color, which I don't know why I ordered it. <laughs> Honestly, I don't. I don't need any more turquoise. Maybe it was, I couldn't just order one. Maybe I'll use it in the rolling one, the rolling blanket. But it would go really well with this as well. But no, it's not going to happen. And then the third thing, oh my goodness, so bad, that I bought was scrumptious, scrumptious pearl. So this is a new to me dyer. I think Etsy recommended it and um, she's Canadian and this is her Strike Me Up base, which is an 80-20 merino nylon blend and there's a little stitch marker that she sends with every skein and I have to tell you that the pictures did not do justice to the electricness of this teal color. It blows me away. I got it this morning. I opened the package this morning and I may very well have to cast it on before this day is over. <laughs> so I got this skein and I also got a skein of, uh, this is PYT, which makes me think of Michael Jackson, Pretty Young Thing. So that's the other one. Very luscious. PYT. Gorgeous. That's it. That's all I have to say to you. I really, really hope the camera likes me. <laughs> And this is recorded. Oh no, that's not it. <laughs> I didn't tell you anything about me. Do you want to hear about me? If you don't, bye. <laughs> if you do. So last time we talked, there was a plague. And I'm sad to say that the plague continued. It continued. Can you believe it? Yes. <laughs> I think it was two days later. Tristan was not getting better. And so this is my public service announcement. Ready? Here it goes. Um, we took him to the doctor because I'm not persistent. So this was his third trip to the doctor. And as you remember, he had the stomach bug and then he had a cold and then he had a double ear infection. And this third trip we went and his eyes were a mess. So he had conjunctivitis and the doctor looked at him and said, okay, enough. Amoxicillin isn't working because he can't keep it down. And they gave him the antibiotic shot, which no one I've talked to has ever heard of this. So this may be a new thing that they do now. Super highly concentrated dose of antibiotics. We were there for two hours. He had to stay and be observed after he got the shot. I don't know if that's because he's 10 months old or if that's because he'd never had it before. So we stayed, he handled it fine. He got home about six o'clock. I put him to bed. Uh, well, we had dinner and then I put him to bed and the few days before that baby had been falling over completely miserable, even with pain meds doubled up, just sleeping all the time, uncomfortable, right? Cause his ears were getting worse and the infection moved into his eyes and um, his doctor was actually worried that it was going, traveling down the drainage tube. So we have some drops that we're actually still doing, but I put him to bed six o'clock the next morning. It was like, Oh, here's Tristan. Where has he been for the last week? Happy, walking, talking, giggling, laughing, just my sweet baby was back. So that shot took care of everything. It was a great relief. <laughs> so, so yeah, he still has the drops going on, but otherwise he's completely fine. He's completely fine. And I think the next night we went to the playground. And Roland had this. Dad, this tell me, what are you doing? Um, I'm building a road. You're building a road? On the construction site. On the construction site. Oh. And I'm digging it up and making a hole in it. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. So that's how I make a road. That's how you make a road? Yep. Okay. And then what happens? And then the cars come on it, so in they show. So, and then the steam hose moves it out. And it smooths it out? Yeah. Are you cold? What? Are you cold right now? No? You feel okay? Yeah. Yeah? What are you wearing? I'm hot. <gasps> he's always <gasps> hot, isn't he, Justin? Yeah, he's always hot. All right. You want to get back to work? Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. <laughs> he's going back to work. What do you think? Who's that guy?
I'm trying not to be critical, but I'm pretty sure you don't make holes to make a road. Just thinking. One of my aunts wants to get him a job at uh, the Department of Transportation as a civil engineer. She thinks he has a bright future in, in highway construction. <laughs> oh my goodness. Silly, silly, silly boy. Yeah. And then I just have to share with you the happiness of, I think this was last night. He was dancing around. He has a happy Tristan. <laughs> Look at you dancing. Tristan, is that fun? Is that fun? Yeah. Can you come to me? Here's summer PJs. Oh, it's you. So, yeah, my in-laws came down on Saturday. We had a great day with them. The whole family was here, actually, in my little tiny condo. <laughs> um, my brother-in-law and his wife came up from D.C., and my in-laws came down from Rockland, mother and father-in-law, and we just, from 9 a.m. until 7 or 8 that night, spent the whole day together, had an awesome time, drank lots of red wine with my mother-in-law, and, you know, we were hung out here, and then we went out to dinner. It was just so nice to be together in the warm spring weather and just the family, you know? So, it was great. It was great. The boys definitely enjoy their time with everyone, but Roland is always happy to see his uncle that night so that that was sweet and the next day uh, everyone else had gone home but Ben had to stick around for work so he came over and hung out for the morning and did nap time or did you know pre-nap ritual <laughs> with Roland and it was great it's just so nice we don't get to see everybody as much as we would like but it is wonderful to be together when we are so I think that's it yeah yeah so I'm looking forward to another 10 days of knitting and having more progress to show you and um, that's it. So enjoy what's going on in your knitting world and um, start planning for stash dash. Think about your mini skeins, get them together. They have to be shipped by May 30th. Did I say that this time? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but um, that was Mac. I don't know if you guys saw him, but he did just jump by. So enough. I'll see you later. Enjoy what's going on. Bye.